Hi everyone, welcome to Math World. This is Cambridge International AS and A Level Mathematics Paper 3, which is a pure mathematics tree for October and November 2023, and the code is 9709 So let's move on to question number one. Question number one Find the exact coordinates of the points on the curve at which the gradient of the tangent is equal to 8. So for your information, gradient of tangent is referring to the dy over dx. Okay, therefore, I will rewrite the question first. And then now we need to differentiate. Okay, so from here, I will just write Now, to get the dy dx from this y, obviously this is rational function, means that we have to apply the quotient rule, okay? which means the quotient rule is basically d over dx u over v, which is over v squared, then v u prime minus u v prime. Now, I will write, that, I will write down the u, the u is u squared, uh, so, sorry, the u is x squared, and then the u prime is going to be 2x. Okay, then the v is 1 minus 3x, then the v prime is negative 3. Okay, then after that, just substitute into this quotient rule formula, then my dy over dx is going to be over 1 minus 3x squared, then 1 minus 3x, v prime, uh, u prime is 2x, then minus, rewrite the u, which is x squared, and then the v prime is going to be negative 3. Okay, then from here, you are given the gradient of tangent, which is dy dx over equals to 8. But before I solve that, or before I replace that, I have to simplify my numerators first. So from here, just do the expansion. This is going to be 2x minus 6x squared, then this minus and minus 3, it becomes plus. So I will get plus 3x squared then over 1 minus 3x squared here. Then now when you further simplify the numerator, you will be getting 2x minus 3x squared as the numerator and just rewrite the denominator. Okay, and then now replace dy dx by 8. That means 8 equals to, now, from this 2x minus 3x squared, you can just rewrite first, okay, because later on we need to solve for the x. The question says points, okay, when you look at the question, exact coordinates of points means that later we need to find x and y. Then now from here, just move up the denominator, okay, and then you have to do the expansion, so 8 bracket 1 minus 3x squared equals to 2x minus 3x squared. And then now expand the new uh, expand the left hand side by using the quadratic expansion a plus b squared equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But if this is minus then the middle term will be minus. Then from here you will be getting 8 bracket 1 minus 6x plus 9x squared. Rewrite the right hand side. Then from here, when you just do expansion again, okay, here, just multiply all the terms by 8, then you will be getting 8 minus 48x plus 72x squared, okay, equals to 2x minus 3x squared. Now, by looking at this, because the numer uh, the left hand side, okay, the left hand side you have positive seventy two x squared, but the right hand side is negative three x squared. So I will move all the terms to the left hand side so that my coefficient for x squared will be positive, which means from here, seventy two x squared plus three x squared it will be seventy five x squared, then minus forty eight x. Okay, move this. 2x to the left side becomes minus 2x, so it will be a total of minus 50x. Then left, 
the constant 8 equals to 0. Now, this quadratic equation can be factorized into two linear factors, 5x minus 2 together with 15x minus 4. Okay, then from here, when 5x minus 2 equals to 0, right, that means your x will be 2 over 5. Or 15x minus 4 equals to 0, that means your x is going to be 4 over 15. So here we get 2x. Therefore, the question is asking for points when you look at the questions here. Okay, so it means that you'll be getting more than one point. So after you have found the x, then to find the y, just substitute into the curve equation. So from here, I will just write when x equals to 2 over 5, my y is x squared. That means 2 over 5 squared divided by 1 minus 3x. Okay, so replace the x by 2 over 5, then at last you'll get negative 4 over 5. This is the y value when the x is 2 over 5. Now, when x equals to 4 over 15, so your y is the same formula, 4 over 15 squared divided by 1 minus 3 times 4 over 15. So this will be 16 over 45. Okay, therefore, my points will be having coordinates of 2 over 5, negative 4 over 5. This is my first point. And then my second point is 4 over 15. Then the y coordinate is 16 over 45. So this is the solution for question number 1. Okay, question number 2. On an argon diagram, shade the region whose points represent the complex numbers z satisfying the inequalities z modulus z minus 2i less than equals to modulus z plus 2 minus i and the argument z plus 1 is between 0 and, and pi over 4 so first of all i need to get the points okay so i will change this inequality into the general form which means z minus 0 plus 2i okay for the left hand side and for the right hand side it will be z minus negative 2 plus i then from here i will be getting two points the first point with coordinates 0 and 2 and then second point with coordinates minus 2 and 1 because of 1i okay and same goes to the next inequality now here I have to write it is 0 less than equal to argument z minus minus 1 plus 0 i so that I will get the reference point so my point here is going to be minus 1 0 because of here minus 1 i 1 minus 1 plus 0 i okay so now by looking at this I need the x to cover up to minus 2 so let's say here is minus 1 minus 2 okay 0 then my y value will be minus 2 uh, sorry 2 1 and 0 so use the same scale right So here I will label as imaginary z and then this is the real real axis. Now mark mark these two points 0 2. Okay so 0 2 and then minus 2 1 now, this inequality means that it is a perpendicular bisector when it is equal sign. Okay, so now perpendicular bisector means that I need to find the midpoints. So, I'm going to join these two points. Then I find the midpoint. Let's say the midpoint is over here. Right, so you can measure if you yeah uh, that's why I said you have to use same skills then you can measure where is the midpoint. Then from here make sure it is a perpendicular bisector. 
draw the equal uh, draw the perpendicular bisector first by looking at here because because there is an equal sign so you can just use a straight line okay so let's say here is minus one it means when you join okay make sure it is 90 degrees right so it's a straight line make sure it's a 90 degrees okay here is 90 degrees right so now another one is this so I will show the region later on the another one is this minus one zero so minus one zero means that the point is at here this is a reference point and then it is between 0 and pi over 4. Pi over 4 is not, uh, 45 degrees. Okay, 45 degrees. So when 45 degrees means that it will be, uh, it will be, okay, here is one unit. Then here is one unit because it's like y equals to x. So it will be, uh, passes through this point, 0, 1. Okay, so I will draw another line to join these two points. And again, that is equal sign, okay? Here, equal sign. Therefore, we use the solid line. Now, here is pi over 4. Alright. So, now, when you look at the first inequality here, first inequality, this means the distance from a general point Z from the point 0, 2. 0, 2 is over here is less than okay less than the distance from the general points to the minus two zero so which means either here up or down right so let's say i pick this point i pick this point All right so obviously this point the distance from this z to zero two is shorter than this point to the green point Okay, the green the green line is greater than is longer than the red line. Therefore, my you see here, I need to find such that the distance okay from the general points to zero two is less than the uh, general points to negative two zero. So obviously the red line is less than is shorter than the green line. Therefore the region is up. Okay, will be this side. So at the same at the same time, another region will be between 0 and pi over 4. That means it's over here. So obviously, your region is going to be this side. Okay, but cannot exceed. Cannot exceed. Because our uh, argument is from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so here is 0. Right, that means the region is going to be here. So this will be the region. Right, so the rest I need to erase. Okay, so now when you have done this region, remember to label the lines. So this line is argument Z plus 2 minus I. Equals to pi over 4. And then this line is modulus z minus 2i equals to z plus 2 minus i okay here we just take the equal sign so this is the solution of this question 2 right so label the zero don't forget to label the zero. Okay, so done for the question two. Now let's move on to question number three. Now for question number three, you are given a graph here, the ln y against x and two points. So the variables x and y are related by the equation y equals to a b to the power of x, where a and b are constants. The diagram shows the results of plotting ln y against x for two pairs of x and y. The coordinates of the points are given. Use this information to find the values of a and b. So since you are given ln y against x after you have transformed this 
original equation. Therefore, we need to take ln both sides in order to get ln y against x. So, when you take one ln on both sides, now for the right hand side, this is ln ab power x. So, we have a formula ln a plus ln b is ln ab. Okay, so it means that I will split it into two ln first, and then at the same time, you have b power x. So then, if ln a to the power of b, the b can be brought down. It will be b ln a, which, which means this is going to be ln y equals to ln a plus ln b power x by using the first formula. After that, by using the second formula, you can bring down the x. It will be x ln b for the last term. Okay, and now since ln y against x, so I would say that my ln y is my capital Y, okay, because it's a straight line, right? Then this x is the x, ln b is our m, and then the ln a is c. So this is m as y equals to mx plus c, which is a straight line when you join that two points. Okay, so it's a straight line. Then now, given two points, so these are the two points. Then we have to use these two points to find the uh, A and B. So, firstly, I will find the M, okay, the gradient or the ln B first. So, now I will write 1, 3.7, and then 2.2, 6.46. So, my ln B, which is the gradient, which is our M. So, for your information, the M is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 if you are given two points. Okay, then now from here, I will just take directly the 6.46. This is basically our ln y2. Then the 3.7 is the ln y1. Then over 2.2 minus 1. Then from here, you will be getting 2.76 over 1.2. Then the answer is 2.3. Now, ln b is 2.3. So therefore, to get the b, right, to get the b, we need to eliminate the ln. So we have this formula. E ln b is basically b. Therefore, I'm taking e both sides. So e ln b is e 2.3. Therefore, B equals to E 2.3, which is 9.97. Okay, then now, after you found the B, then we can find the A by using this equation. So now I will just pick one point and substitute. So I will pick 1 and 3.7. So probably here I will just label this is our first equation. So now from first equation, my ln y is 3.7. So 1 comma 3.7. So 3.7 equals to ln a unknown plus the x now is 1. Then ln b. Okay, ln b, just substitute 2.3. That is our ln b. Okay, then from here, my ln A is 3.7 minus 2.3, which is 1.4. Therefore, using the same method as just now, E ln A is E 1.4. Hence, my A is E 1.4, which is 4.06, according to three significant figures. So, this is the solution for this question. Now, question number four. The complex number u is defined by this division of two complex numbers where a is real. a express u in Cartesian form x plus i y where x and y are in terms of a. So, to solve this division of complex number, we need to divide or we need to times, I would say, we need to times a conjugate of the denominator. So, the conjugate of the denominator is a plus 5i. 
So once you times it at the bottom, you have to times it on top as well. So that the whole second term will be cancelled off and it will be 1. Then you'll be getting back the same question, the same U. Then from here, you have to do expansion. But for the denominator, since this is complex number times by its conjugate, we have a formula here. Let's say x plus yi multiply with x minus yi. So complex number times conjugate, it will be same as x squared plus y squared, real squared plus imaginary squared. So therefore, I will be getting a squared, which is my real, and then my imaginary, I will say that it is 5. Or you can say it is minus 5, it's up to you. So I will just write plus 5 squared. Okay, then for the numerator, you get just multiply. So 3 times a plus 5i, you will be getting 3a plus 15i. After that, the ai multiply with a plus 5i, then you will be getting plus a square i, then a times 5 is 5a. i times i will be i squared. Now, for your information, i square is minus 1. Okay, that means I will change this to this is minus 1. So, once you change the i square to minus 1, that means 3a and the last term will be real part because without i. So, I will group them together. It will be 3a minus 5a, okay, here, then plus, then the second and third term, you can factorize the i. It will be 15 minus, 15 plus a squared. Okay, wait, let me check. Okay, I did a mistake. This is 2i, not ai, okay? I copy the question wrongly. This is 2i. So, 2i times a, it will be 2ai, okay? Sorry for the mistake. Then, 2i times 5i, it will be 10i squared. So, then from here, I will change. So, which means this is the last term will be minus 10a. Uh, there's no more a, okay? Minus 10. Because i squared is minus 1. Then plus i, 15 plus 2a. And over a squared plus 25. And now we simplify. So, or we can split it into two parts because we need to leave our answer in x plus i, y, real and imaginary part. Therefore, I will be getting 3a minus 10 over a squared plus 25, then plus 15 plus 2a over a squared plus 25i. So that is our solution. Now, next part, given that argument u is pi over 4, find the value of a. Okay, so when you look at this pi over 4, by drawing the argon diagram, pi over 4 is here. That means this is our u. Okay, so which means to find the argument, argument is actually at the anchor, it will be tangent, I mean, uh, Inverse tangent of the y or the of the this is the imaginary part of the imaginary part over the real part. It will be pi over four because tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so from here I will write argument u is pi over four. So therefore, this is inverse tangent the imaginary part, which is. 15 plus 2a over a squared plus 25, this is our imaginary part, over real part. Real part is 3a minus 10 over a squared plus 25. Equal so pi over 4. Okay, 
Then when you look at here, basically the a squared plus 25 can be cancelled off because both are the denominator. And by moving this inverse tangent to the right side, it will be tangent pi over 4, which means I will be getting 15 plus 2a over 3a minus 10 equals to tangent pi over 4. So tangent pi over 4 is basically 1, right? So which means this is 1. Then now, I will just move up the 3a minus 10 to the right side. So which means you will be getting 15 plus 2a equals to 1 times 3a minus 10. Okay, then from here, this 2a move to the right side and the minus 10 will be moved to the left hand side. So I will get 15 plus 10 equals to 3a minus 2a. Therefore, you will be getting a equals to 25. Okay, so that's the solution of this question. Okay, next question number 5. Given that this equation, find the exact value of tangent x. So now, since you have sine of two terms and also cos of two terms, then we need to use this formula. Sine A plus minus B equals to sine A cos B plus minus cos A sine B. Okay. Another formula for the cos is cos A plus minus B. You will get cos A cos b minus plus sine a sine b okay so by applying both formulas i will be getting sine x plus pi over 6 let me rewrite the question first Okay, then now apply the first formula. So you will be getting sine x cos pi over 6 plus cos x sine pi over 6. Then minus sine x minus pi over 6 when you apply the same formula, but now we are taking the minus sign. You will be getting sine x cos pi over 6 minus cos x sine pi over 6. Then equals to, for the cos, use the second formula, it will be cos x cos pi over 3 minus sine x sine pi over 3. Then minus cos x cos pi over 3 plus sine x sine pi over 3. Okay, so now we need to find the exact value of tangent x. So now you have to get the exact value of the cos pi over 6 and all the cos pi over 6, sine pi over 6 and so on. Okay, so cos pi over 6 is basically root 3 over 2. So square root 3 over 2 sine x. Then sine pi over 6 is half. So I will get half cos x for the second term, then minus, this minus, I will bring it in to get uh, directly. Okay, then here will be square root 3 over 2 sine x, then the minus minus is plus half cos x. Then equals to, for the right hand side, cos pi over 3 is half. So I'll get half cos x, then minus sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2, sine x and again the minus will be bring in okay then you will be getting minus half cos x minus square root 3 over 2 sine x then now when you simplify okay so the sine sine x on the left side will be cancelled off and then the cos x on the right side will be cancelled off all right so from here 
you will be getting half cos x plus half cos x. So I will be getting 1 cos x. Then for the right hand side, minus root 3 over 2 sin x minus root 3 over 2 sin x means that you multiply this by 2. So when you multiply by 2, it will be just negative root 3 sin x. And now we need to find tangent x. Tangent x is sin x over cos x. So you just divide the whole equation by cos x. So here, cos x over cos x equals to negative root 3 sin x over cos x. Okay, so left side will be 1, right hand side will be negative root 3 tangent x. So at last, your tangent x, it will be negative 1 over square root 3. Okay, so you can leave your answer in this form or you just times square root 3 over square root 3, then that will be negative root 3 over 3. So that's the solution of this 5a. Okay, now next question, next part is hence, find the exact roots. So since your x is the variable in the question, the roots means the x values. So it will be more than one x because there is a s, the roots okay, of the equation for x between 0 and 2 pi. So from here, basically you are solving the tangent expression that we have found just now. That means we are solving tangent x is negative root 3 over 3. Okay, we get it from the previous part. And then the domain is from 0 to 2 pi. Now, when the tangent is negative, okay, so I will refer to the quadrant, it will be negative for, I mean, uh, negative for the tangent in second quadrant and also last quadrant. So now I have to find these two angles. Okay, or I will just find one angle here. The basic angle is just without the negative, means that the x is inverse tangent root 3 over 3. Then you will be getting pi over 6. Okay, both also pi over 6. But then our angle is basically from 0, okay, from the whole, uh, first quadrant. So this is the first angle and the second angle, the orange colors. So which means now my x is going to be, the first orange color is pi minus pi over 6, and the second orange color is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6. Okay, therefore you will be getting 5 over 6 pi and 11 over 6 pi. So that's the solution of this question. Okay, question number 6. The parametric equations of a curve are x equals to square root t plus 3 and y equals to ln t, where the t is greater than 0. Find or obtain a simplified expression for dy dx in terms of t. So now your x is square root t plus 3. So this square root I can change to so t to the power of a half plus 3. Okay, then from here my dx dt, you need to bring down the half, it will be half t and the power always minus 1 because we are differentiating. So half minus 1 is negative half. Then you can rewrite this because the t with negative degree, I will write 1 over 2 times 1 over square root t which is 1 over 2 square root t. That is our dx dt. Now, your y is ln t. Therefore, dy over dt will differentiate ln. Okay, we have a formula here. Differentiate ln fx with respect to x. It will be over, copy whatever after the ln, means that copy the fx. Then the numerator is f prime x. Okay, so which means now you copy whatever after the long which means is the t, differentiate t with respect to t is 1. So that is our dy dt. Now to get the dy over dx here, 
we need to apply the chain rule. So dy dx is basically dy over dt times dt over dx. Okay, which means now this is going to be 1 over t times, now for your information, dt over dx is 1 over dx over dt. Okay, that means I need to take 1 over of this value. So this is 1 over 1 over 2 square root t, which is same as 1 over t times 2 square root t. Okay, which means now here is going to be 2 over square root t. So this is our dy dx. Now, B, hence, has misused a previous answer. Find the exact coordinates of the point on the curve at which the gradient of tangent is negative 2. Now, gradient of, ten, uh, sorry, gradient of normal is negative 2. So we know that gradient of tangent is uh, the m, uh, is the dy dx. Alright, so now given m normal is negative 2. So m tangent because the gradients and norm, the tangent and normal line are perpendicular. Okay, so therefore, m tangent is negative 1 over m normal. So you will be getting negative 1 over bracket negative 2, which is positive half. And as I said, and at the same time, dy dx is the gradient of tangent. Okay, so then from here, dy dx is found. So it means that 2 over square root t is 1 over 2. So which means 2 over square root t is 1 over 2. Then now, the 2 move up. Okay, we use a cross multiplication. 2 move up, square root 3 move up. So then you will be getting 4 equals to square root t. Hence, by squaring both sides, T is 16. Okay, when you square both sides. In order to eliminate the square root. Right, so now the question is asking for exact coordinates of the point. So after we have found the T, we need to find the X and Y. So substitute back into the X and Y expressions. So now x is square root 3, square root t plus 3. So which means x equals to square root t plus 3, which means it is square root 16 plus 3. I will be getting 7. And then the y is ln t just now. So therefore, this is ln 16. Okay, you can leave it in this form or you can further simplify. It will be ln 4 squared or ln 2 degree 4 also can, up to you. Then this is 4 on 2. Right? Therefore, the point with coordinates 7 and 4 on 2. So that's the solution of this question. Now, next question is question number 7. The variables x and theta satisfy the differential equation. Given x equals to 1 and theta equals to 0. Solve the differential equation obtaining x squared in terms of theta. So now x over tangent theta dx over d theta equals to x squared plus 3. So now to solve this differential equation, we need to apply the separable variables, which means you need to split the x, uh, the x and theta. Okay, so by looking at the dx over d data here, which means that dx is on top, therefore all the x should be on the left side. So this d data will be moved up to the other side. Therefore, by splitting the variables, I will be getting x over x squared plus 3. So this x squared plus 3 is treated as one term. Then here dx, and then the tangent data d data will be moved to the other side. It will be this expression and don't forget to integrate both sides at the same time okay so now for the first 
uh, for the left hand side for this integration we need to apply ln so then you'll be getting integrate over fx then here dx the numerator is f prime x you will be getting ln fx plus c okay so i apply this because the degree of the denominator is one and then at the same time where i differentiate x squared plus 3 i will be getting 2x here i have the x already so what i need to do is for the next step i will just rewrite this denominator and then use this formula write down the differentiation on the numerator so differentiate x squared plus 3 it will be 2x then you compare with the previous expression so i need to times another half to get the same expression on the left hand side okay in the previous step now for the right hand side integrate tangent data only one step to only one way to integrate this which is by converting the tangent data into sine data over cos data and again for this sine data over cos data i'm going to use the ln right so now for your information, when you differentiate cos theta, it will be negative sine theta. So I should write negative sine theta here first, then now. But when you look at here, negative sine theta over cos theta is basically the negative tangent theta. It is different from the previous question or previous step. Therefore, to make it the same, I have to times another minus outside. So then you will be getting positive tangent theta. Okay? So after we have done this, by using the ln formula, then the left hand side it will be half ln x squared plus 3 you can write plus c but i will write the plus c on the right side later on then the right hand side it will be negative the whole integration is going to be ln of cos x or uh, cos theta then now i plus c okay so then now after you get this just replace the x and theta value x is 1 theta is 0 so x is 1 theta is 0 which means I will be getting half ln x squared is 1 squared 1 squared plus 3 4 that equals to negative ln cos 0 plus c okay cos 0 is basically 1 All right so this is 1 then from here I will get c equals to half ln 4 plus ln 1 for your info ln 1 is 0 okay therefore i'm getting my c now it is half ln 4. so once you have found the c substitute back into the previous step that means i will get half ln x squared plus 3 equals to negative ln cos theta plus half ln 4. okay then from here you can just times the whole equation by 2 that it will be ln x squared plus 3 then minus 2 ln cos theta plus ln 4 okay and now we look at the question over here you see here express x squared in terms of theta so now I have to group okay I have to group the right side first so again just now we have a formula it is a ln b equals to ln b to the power a therefore i will have to write the first term on the right side is going to be ln cos theta to the power of negative 2 then plus ln 4 and then for the right side i will combine the two ln so ln a plus ln b is ln AB. Therefore, this is going to be ln 4 cos theta to the power of negative 2. So, this power negative 2 is basically 4 over cos squared theta. Okay? And now you get ln both sides. One ln on both sides. Basically, the next step is just to ignore the ln. Then you will, you will write x squared plus 3 equals to 4 over cos squared theta. So then x squared, it will be by moving the plus 3 to right side. And you can leave your answer in 4 over cos squared theta or probably the cos squared theta you can change to second theta. Okay, So it will be 4 second squared theta because 1 over cos is second. 
So this is second squared theta, then minus 3. So this is the solution. Okay, question number 8. By sketching a suitable pair of graphs, show the equation has only one root. So now we have to sketch y1 is square root x, y2 is ex minus 3. Okay, so for your information, for the ex, okay, I will refer to the ex. This is the ex graph. Here is 1. Now, when I sketch this graph, what I need to do here is I will draw the axis first. So, for EX squared minus 3 means that you are moving down this for 3 units. So, here is 1, 2, 3. That means it will cut. These points will be here. Alright. That means, and at the same time, we know that the, uh, the graph never touched the axis, which means there is a, the, the axis is asymptote, which means I will have to draw this line as dotted line. This is minus 3. So the graph, later on this graph, when you move that, it will not touch this minus 3. So let's say here is minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. So it will not touch this. Okay. And then my point is over here. And this is 0. Now, if you want to get an exact, I mean, more accurate graph, you can just find for the y2, when it is the y equals to 0, what happened to the x? So, x equals to 0. Oh, no, sorry, y equals to 0. So, 0 equals to ex minus 3. So EX is 3, therefore, to get the X, you take long both sides, long 3. This long 3 is basically 1.09, okay? All these are the rough work. So I know that it will cut here. And the shape is the same as the EX. So now I will sketch the graph. So, so this is my y equals to e x minus 3. Another one is square root x. So, square root x by x is 0, you get 0. Where x is 1, the y is 1. Okay? Then now you can just sketch. The graph is in this shape. Okay. Then from here, I will label y equals to square root x. Now obviously, there is only one intersection point. Therefore, you just write only one intersection point. Intersection point. Hence, only one root for the equation. Only one real root for the equation. Okay, so this is the graph. Right, so all these are the rough work. Okay, now B. Show by calculation that this root lies between 1 and 2. So our equation is square root x equals to ex minus 3. So I will change to square root x equals to ex minus 3. So I will move all the terms on the right side to the left side. So it means that now square root x minus ex plus 3 equals to 0. And then I will let fx be the left hand side. 
So to show that the root lies between 1 and 2, I'm going to use a sign change rule, which means I will count the fx or f1 and f2. Make sure you will be getting different sign, means one positive and one negative. So when f1, you will be getting 1.28, which is greater than 0. And when it is f2, you will be getting square root 2 minus e squared plus 3 which is negative 2.97 and this is less than 0 so you can just write since f1 is greater than 0 and f2 is smaller than 0 hence there is a sign change okay therefore the root lies between one and two. So that's the solution of this part B. Part C, if a sequence of values given by this formula converges or show, okay, sorry, show that if this formula converges, then it converges to the root of the equation in A, which means now, right, you need to show you are getting back the equation in part a which means you want to show that it is same as square root x minus equals to ex minus 3 okay from this formula so first step is to ignore all the subscripts so then i will be getting x equals to ln of 3 plus square root x just ignore the n plus 1 and n then from here to get the square root x now i need to eliminate the ln we have a formula here to eliminate ln you have to take e both sides. So e ln a is a. Therefore, I'm going, I'm going to take e both sides. So e x is e ln 3 plus square x. So now, left side, you get e ln, uh, e x. Right hand side, e ln will be cancelled off. Then you will be getting just 3 plus square x. Okay. And then now, keep the ln, keep the square x on the one side. So I will get square root x on the right hand side and then this 3 will be moved to the left side. So it will be e x minus 3. Okay, then here you will be getting the equation in part A. So our part A is square root x, sorry, square root x equals to e x minus 3. Okay, so therefore you can just write down the conclusion here. So the formula The iteration, the iterative formula converges to the root in equation, in to the root of equation in A. Okay, so done for this part C. Now D, use the iterative formula to calculate the root square to two decimal places. Give the answer of each iteration to four decimal places. So now, our formula xn plus 1 equals to ln of 3 plus square root xn. Okay, from the previous step. Right. So now, from here, I will decide what is my x0 so how to decide you can refer back to the parts b so since it's mentioned that the root lies between 1 and 2 so you can let it be 1 or 2 or any other numbers in between 1 and 2 so i will take the middle value which is 1.5 as my x0 so which means now let x0 be 1.5 okay x0 that means now my x1 it will be ln of 3 plus square root 1.5. And now you need to leave your answer to two, four decimal places. So it will be 1.4410. And then your final answer, two decimal places, right? Two decimal places is one, uh, 44 now. So 44 is different from 5. Therefore, continue.
to get x2. x2 will be ln of 3 plus square root 1.4410. Then you will be getting 1.4352. Okay, instead of 44, 1.44 now becomes 1.43. So again, they are not the same. Then you have to continue for next step, ln x3. It will be ln of 3 plus square root 1.4352. Then this is going to be 1.4346. Okay, so from here, now you get 43. Here, 43. Okay. Then, now, when you look at here, this is 5. Here is 4, 6. So, if you are not sure, you can just continue for one more step. So, x4 is ln bracket 3 plus square root 1.4346. Okay. Then, you will be getting, let me rewrite this. So, then you will be getting this value. Okay. So the answer is 1.4345. Right. So from here, you are getting the same value. So here 43, and then here is also 4. 4. Therefore, by looking at the 4, you round up. Then, uh, sorry, we do round up. We just ignore the 4 because it is less than 5. Therefore, your final answer, x is 1.43. So that's the solution of this part D. Now, next question number 9. The diagram shows the graph. Y equals to x times exponential negative 1 over 4x squared for positive x, or I mean uh, for x greater or equals to 0, and the maximum point m. Find the exact coordinates of m. So, since the m is the maximum point, means that we need to get dy dx equals to 0. Okay, so now your y is x e negative 1 over 4 x squared. So obviously, this is the product of two terms. Therefore, to get the dy dx, you need to apply product rule. So product rule is d over dx uv equals to uv prime plus v u prime. Okay, so now I will write down my u is x. So u prime is 1. My v is e negative 1 over 4 x squared. So when you differentiate exponential function, so e, let's say, uh, fx, it will be e fx, just rewrite the whole e, then multiply with the differentiation of the power of e, which is f prime x. Okay, this is the formula to differentiate the e. Now what we need to do here is, your v prime, just rewrite. And then when you differentiate negative 1 over 4x squared, it will be negative 2 over 4x. So this is negative half x exponential, negative 1 over 4x squared. Okay, that is our v prime. Now, my dy dx equals to u v prime. So, x times negative half x e negative 1 over 4 x squared plus v u prime. So rewrite the v. u prime is just 1. Okay. <clears throat> now, from here, to get the m, I need to solve dy dx equals to 0. So before I solve, I will factorize the common term. So the common term is actually the exponential. This is in common. Okay, so I factorize the exponential, negative 1 over 4x squared. And then the remaining terms will be negative 1 over 2x squared plus 1. 
So now, when dy dx equals to 0, I will write e negative 1 over 4x squared times negative half x squared plus 1 equals to 0. But then we know that exponential is never negative. Okay, therefore, negative half x squared plus 1 equals to 0. So by moving the half x squared to the other side, I'm getting half x squared equals to positive 1. Therefore, x squared is 2. And now I need to find exact coordinates of m. Hence, my x is plus minus square root 2. But then obviously from the graph, your x coordinate for the m is between 0 and 3. It's positive. Okay. Therefore, my x is greater than 0. Hence, my x is going to be square root 2. Alright. So then from here, I need to find the y value. So my y is x exponential. So my y is x exponential, negative 1 over 4x squared. So when x equals to square root 2, my y is square root 2, e negative 1 over 4, square root 2 squared. Therefore, this is going to be square root 2, e. Now, this is square root 2 squared is 2. So it will be negative 1 over 4 times 2. Therefore, square root 2, e negative half. Okay, hence I'm getting my point M. My M with coordinates square root 2 and then square root 2 exponential negative half. Alright, so solve the A. B, using the substitution x equals to square root u or otherwise, find the integration sorry, find by integration the exact value, exact area of the shaded region bounded by the curve, the axis, and the line x equals to 3. Okay, so go back to the graph. Alright, so from here, the area, since the region is towards the axis, therefore the area is going to be integrate the graph dx, the x from 0 until 3. Okay, so that is our area formula. So the area is integrate from 0 to 3, then the curve. So x e negative 1 over 4 x squared dx. And then now it's given the hint. <coughs> By using substitution x equals to square root u or otherwise. So it means that now I will write x equals to square root u. Okay, that means now my u, I will just say I square both sides. So x square is u. Okay, then my, I will write u equals to x squared, then it will be better. So from here, u equals to x squared because you square both sides. Then now my du over dx is 2x. Okay, now. When you look at the question over here, I have x dx, which means this dx I move up and then the x combine. Okay, so du is 2x dx. So x dx is half du. Okay, because I need x dx over here. Now, don't forget to change the limits. So when the x equals to 0, my u is x squared, 0 squared, which is 0. When my x is 3, my u is x squared. So 3 squared is 9. Okay, so from here, I will change all to u now. So integration 0 to 3 will be changed to 0 to 9. Okay, and then the x dx, this x dx will be changed to half du. So I will write the half outside, half du. Now just left the e. So this will be e, negative 1 over 4, here x squared. So our x squared is the u. So it means that using the substitution method, substitution of x squared to square root u, instead of complicated integration, I have changed to the exponential integration. 
So for your information, to integrate exponential function, we need to refer to this formula. Just rewrite the whole exponential. Then differential mx plus b is over m, then plus c. Okay, so now use this formula and I will be getting half. Rewrite the half. So the exponential you rewrite. That over differentiate negative 1 over 4 u is negative 1 over 4. Limits from 0 to 9. Then this negative 1 over 4 you move up, it will be negative 4. So I will be getting half times negative 4. Then exponential. So, half times negative 4 is basically negative 2. And at the same time, I will substitute the u. So, you get e negative 9 over 4 minus e 0. Okay. Then, now the question is asking for exact area. So, I have to leave my answer in e. So, this negative, okay, I will bring it in. This negative, just the negative. I will leave the 2 outside. So, I will get 2 bracket negative e negative 9 over 4 minus minus is a plus. e0 is basically 1. Okay, so you can leave your answer in this form or make it nicer. You can just rearrange. This will be your exact area. Okay, next question. <coughs> Number 10. Given the fx, <coughs> express fx in partial fractions. So I will write 24x plus 13 over 1 minus 2x times 2 plus x squared. Okay, first of all, you must make sure this is the proper rational function before we find the partial fractions. So the degree of the x in the numerator is 1, but when you look at the denominator, we do expansion here. This is squared and this is 1. So total is degree 3. That is the highest degree of x in the denominator, which means this is proper rational function. So if proper rational function means that you have, you can find the partial fractions directly. Okay. Otherwise, if you get same degree, let's say here power 3, and here is also power 3, or higher degree in the, the, uh, in the numerator, that is what we call as improper rational function then you have to apply the partial uh, sorry the polynomial division before the partial fractions okay please take note on this always check first so now i would write over 1 minus 2x plus over now the second factor is basically a repeated linear factor then we have to write 2 plus x with degree 1 first and then followed by 2 plus x with degree 2 now, all these are linear factors, so the numerators will be constants, A, B, C. So then the next step is to get the same denominator as on the left-hand side. So what we need to do is we will compare with the left-hand side denominator, make sure they are the same. So it means that the first term, I need to multiply with the second factor because I already have 1 minus 2x. So I times by... 2 plus x squared, then over 2 plus x squared. So that now my denominator will be the same. Then for the second term, b over 2 plus x. So now you are given this, but degree 1. So it means that I still need degree 1 and the first term. Okay, degree 1 of the second factor. So it means that it will be 1 minus 2x multiply with 2 plus x. Then plus c over 2 plus x squared. So obviously the second term is given. So I need to times by 1 minus 2x. Okay, so after you found all the same denominators, what we need to do is just cancel the denominators. Okay, and compare the numerators. So here I will be getting 24x plus 13 equals to a times 2 plus x squared 
plus b times 1 minus 2x multiply with 2 plus x plus c multiply with 1 minus 2x. Okay, so to find the unknowns a, b, c, just let the linear factors be 0. Okay, so what I need to do is I will let 2 plus x be 0. Therefore, my x is minus 2. So it means that whenever you see 2 plus x, it will be 0. Okay, then I can find the c directly. So which means I will be getting 24 times minus 2 plus 13 on the left side. The a and c, you can just ignore it. Uh, sorry, uh, a and b will be ignored because you have 2 plus x. So I will just write c bracket 1 minus 2 times minus 2. So for the left hand side, you will be getting negative 35. Right hand side is 5c. Hence, my c is negative 7. Now, next is to let 1 minus 2x be 0. Which means now my x is half. So again, substitute half into the whole equation. So 24 times half plus 13. So, which means now, Whenever you see 1 minus 2x, you can just ignore it. Means that I am get, I'm finding the a now. So it will be a bracket 2 plus half squared. So for the left hand side, it will be 25. Right hand side is 25 over 4a. Therefore, my a is 4. Okay, so when you refer to this equation, this equation we only have two different factors so but then we have three unknowns which means we have to find another unknown by replacing the x so by i mean you just replace the x by any numbers so i will just let it be one or i will let it be zero it will be easier to calculate you can let it be one or two as long as not minus two and a half so i'll let it be zero so left hand side i will get 24 times zero plus 13 Okay, then the right hand side, I will get a, a is 4, so I'll probably, I will just write a first, 2 plus 0 is 2 squared, then plus b, whenever you see x, it will be 0, so it means that this is 1, this is 2, so it's 2, then plus c, 1 minus 0 is 1, so which means 13 equals to 4a, my a is also 4, plus 2b, plus c is negative 7. Okay, so now my 2b is going to be 13. This is my uh, 16. So move 16 to the other side. Then minus 7, move to the other side because plus. Then you will be getting 2b is 4. Okay, so then my b is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2. So now, final answer, just rewrite. So 24x plus 13 over 1 minus 2x times 2 plus x, it will be a over first term. So a is 4. So a over 1 minus 2x, there's a squared here, plus b over 2 plus x, okay, plus c. c is minus 7. So over 2 plus x squared. But then we don't write plus and minus. What we do, do we need to do is just simplify. The plus and minus becomes minus. So this is our these are the partial fractions. Okay. Now B hence obtain the expansion of x, expansion of fx in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x squared. Which means now we need to expand these three fractions, uh, these three rational functions. Okay, so I will write 4 over 1 minus 2x plus 2 over 2 plus x minus 7 over 2 plus x squared. This is going to be 4 bracket 1 minus 2x to the power of negative 1. You move up the denominators first. Then lastly, 7 times 2 plus x to the power of negative 2. Okay, 
Now, for the binomial expansion, we have this formula, 1 plus x degree n. This is the formula when the x, when the n is not positive integer. So it's going to be 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared. Because we need to expand until x squared. Then the full expansion is up to infinity terms. Now, we have two rules for you to use this formula. The first one is make sure first term is 1 and then the second one is plus. So now, I will rewrite. So it will be 4 bracket 1 plus negative 2x to the power of negative 1. Okay, so for the second term, since this is 2 plus x, I have to factorize the 2 to make it to 1. So 1 plus x over 2 to the power of negative 1. And then minus 7, again I factorize the 2 to make it to 1. So once I have changed to this form, I have satisfied the two conditions, then I will just apply the formula. So from here, it will be 4 bracket 1 plus, my n is minus 1. The x becomes negative 2x, okay, up to x squared. So plus, the next term is n, the n minus 1, so minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 over 2 factorial times negative 2x squared. Okay, now, for the next one, it's going to be 2. This is 2. But then, when you see here, this minus 1 must refer to this 2, must be applied to these two terms. So, I will be getting 2 power negative 1. Then, for 1 plus x over 2 to the power of negative 1, I'm going to apply the formula. It will be 1 plus n x. x is x over 2. Then, plus minus 1 times minus 2 over 2 factorial x over 2 squared okay and same goes to the next one minus 7 this power negative 2 you got to bring it in to the whole square bracket that means it's 2 power negative 2 Then followed by the expansion, it will be 1 plus, now the n is negative 2. Then the x is x over 2. Then plus negative 2 times negative 3 over 3 factorial, sorry, over 2 factorial because just two terms. Then x over 2 squared. Okay. So then from here, we just need to simplify all the terms. So I write 4 bracket. So 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared. Then the next expansion here, 2 times 2 power negative 1. That means this is 1. Okay. So I will just write 1. Then it will be 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 4. Then this is 2 power negative 2, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. Then I will write negative 7 over 4. Multiply with 1 minus x plus 3 over 4 x squared. Okay, so lastly, just do the expansion. So 4, bring in. Then this minus 7 over 4, bring in. Then from here, you will be getting 4 plus 8x plus 16x squared. Then rewrite the second bracket. Plus 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 4. So the minus 7 over 4, you bring it into the square bracket. It will be negative 7 over 4 plus 7 over 4x minus 21 over 16x squared. Okay, so at last, you will be getting 13 over 4 plus 37 over 4x followed by 
239 over 16x squared. So this is the expansion up to x squared for the fx. Okay, so done for this expansion and then now let's move on to the next part. Next part C, state the values, state the set of values of x for which the expansion in B is valid. Okay, so to get this, we need to refer to the general form. Okay, just for information, when we go back to this general form, the expansion, this expansion will be valid for modulus x less than 1. Where do you get this modulus x? It's from here. Okay, which means now I need to refer to modulus of all of this to be less than 1. So which means it will be modulus of negative 2x less than 1 and then modulus of x over 2. Both are the same. So x over 2 more than 1, uh, less than 1. Sorry, less than 1, not more, less. Okay, so from here, my after the modulus, the negative 2 becomes 2. So 2 modulus x less than 1, therefore modulus x less than half. And then here, to get the modulus x, you will just uh, times the 2 or move the 2 to the right side, becomes less than 2. Okay, so how to get the x values for which expansion is valid? So you can just draw the line. This means modulus, the x is between minus half and half. Okay, this is x between negative 2 and 2. Alright, so now you have to mark all these points. All these values. So negative 2 and 2, this is the first inequality. And then the second inequality is negative half and half. So you need to find the x which is satisfied by both inequalities, means that which is the middle part. Okay, so from here, you will just write the expansion is valid is valid when the modulus x is less than half because we are taking the smaller region because this region is satisfied by both of them. Okay, so that's the solution of this question. Now, question number 11. Given this diagram, so you are given a cuboid in which OA is 3 units, and then the OC is 2 units, and then the OD is 2 units. Vectors i, j, k are parallel to o, a, o, d, and o, c respectively. m is the midpoint of e, m. Now find the position vector of m. Okay, only one mark. So position vector of m to get the o, m. O, m is o, a plus a, e plus e, m. So the OA is 3i, AE, okay, AE is parallel to OD, therefore is 2j, EM, right, EM is parallel to OC, but then since the M is a midpoint, so we know that here is 2 units, that means EM is only 1 unit, so it will be 1k. So that is our OM. Okay, now, given the P with, co with position vector, I plus J plus 2K, calculate the angle PAM. So, the AM, okay, AM is here. <clears throat> so, PAM, let's say the P is over here. This is the angle. Okay, so let theta be the angle PAM. So, according to the scalar products formula, to get the theta, 
I will use AP, vector AP, dot vector AN, equals to magnitude AP, magnitude AN, cos theta. So now, my vector AP is OP minus OA. So now my OP is I plus J plus 2K minus OA. Basically, OA is just 3I. Okay, so minus 3I. Then from here, I will be getting negative 2I plus J plus 2K. Now, to get the AM, AM is OM minus OA. So we have found the OM just now. This is our OM. So it will be 3i plus 2j plus k, then minus 3i. Because your a is the 3i. OA is 3i. Then 3i minus 3i, you get 0. Then I will be getting 2j plus k. Okay. Then I'll substitute into the formula. This is the formula. It will be, okay, I convert it in the vector form, I mean the column vector form, negative 2i, 1j, 2k for my AP, dot am is 0i, 2j, 1k. That equals to magnitude. Magnitude is just square the components. So minus 2 squared plus 1 square plus 2 squared. Uh, square root of the squares, okay? I should say square root of the squares. Then the magnitude of AM, it will be 0 squared, no need to write. So if you want, you can just write. Yeah. Then after that, cos theta. So for the scalar products formula, what we need to do is you just multiply the corresponding components and then plus all together. So I will get minus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 1. Then for the first square root, it will be square root 9. Second square root is square root 5. Then cos theta. Okay, so for the left hand side, you will get 4. Then equals to square root 9 times square root 5 cos theta. Then now, since the question is just asking for angle, we just need to find the theta. Okay, so now my cos theta is 4 over square root 5 times square root 9. Therefore, my theta is inverse cos of this value, and then you will get 53.4 degrees. Okay, so you can change the square root 9 to 3, no problem. Alright, so that's the angle PAM. Now see, find the exact length of the perpendicular from P to the line passing through O and M. Okay, so let's say here is O. This is M. Just now, here is P. And now you need to find what is this perpendicular distance. Okay, so from here, I will let the points Q be on the line OM such that PQ is perpendicular to the line OM. So now, let Q lies on the line OM. Okay, so the line equation is basically I equals to A plus TB. So this A is the position vector of a fixed point. This B is the direction vector. So now since OM is passing through O and M, so I will just write my R is uh, just, just uh, TOM. Okay, because I'm referring to the O as my fixed point. So therefore, this is T, my OM, my OM is 3I, 2J, 1K, so 3 to 1. So here is going to be 3 to 1. Hence, this is 3T, 2T, and 1T. Okay, so that means my OQ will be this factor as well, 3T, 2T, and 1T. Okay, so from the diagram, PQ is perpendicular to OM, right? So that means I have to find my PQ vector. So vector PQ is OQ minus OP, which is 3T, 
2t and t minus my op just now 1i 1j 2k so 1 1 2 therefore this is going to be 3t minus 1 2t minus 1 and then t minus 2 there is my P op uh, sorry pq so my op is perpendicular to om therefore i will write pq dot om equals to zero okay so now my om is 3 over 3 to 1 so here i will just rewrite it will be 3t minus 1 2t minus 1 t minus 2 multiply with 3 to 1 or dot with 3 to 1 that equals to 0 this is the properties of perpendicular so now again multi uh, this is a what is that called uh, dot product or scalar product we just multiply and plus all together so i will write 3 times 3t minus 1 plus 2 times 2t minus 1 plus 1 times t minus 2 equals to 0 so now do expansion it will be 9t minus 3 plus 4t minus 2 plus t minus 2 that equals to 0 so the total of the t here it will be 14t so i will get 14t so all the constants move to the other side it will be 7 that means now my t is 7 over 14 which is half okay now when you look at the diagram i need to find what is the length of pq before you get the length of pq we need to get the factor pq that means now i am replacing the t in this factor so now my pq it will be 3t minus 1 so 3t minus 1 and then the next one is 2t minus 1 lastly it will be t minus 2 so from here the first one is going to be half the second is 0 and the third component is negative 3 over 2 this is my vector or pq and then the exact length so magnitude of the vector it will be square root of each component square square of each component okay then from here you will be getting square root of this is 1 over 4 plus 9 over 4 so you will get square root of 10 over 4 so here I can split it into two square root it will be square root 10 over square root 4 then at last it will be square root 10 over 2 okay so from here I will just write down the exact length modulus pq equals to square root 10 over 2 okay so with this we have completed the whole paper right and it's also come to the end comes to the end of the video thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoy watching my video and share with your friends as well don't forget to stay tuned for more upcoming videos okay thank you bye